What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're obviously going to be talking about the craziness that went down today in the overall markets. But before we do talk about that, I want to reveal the giveaway winner from yesterday's Christmas giveaway. And pretty much how I ran this, guys, was I wanted you to comment a random number from 1 to 100 in yesterday's video. And I actually had 75, around 75 people join that giveaway which is absolutely crazy guys I didn't think that many people would do it but hey who doesn't want an extra $25 right and let's get into what my number was and we actually had two people guess this exact number but we're going to be picking the first person that guessed the number because that's the only fair way to do it and we're going to show you guys I'm going to show you guys right now the number that I wrote on my whiteboard before uploading that video and it was Boom! 37. 37. So let's hop into the computer and let's see who won the giveaway. So we can see here in my comment section how many people actually did join this. And like I said, guys, we had about 75, uh, 80 people join this giveaway. And, you know, thanks to everyone that joined it again and wishing me a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody out there that did join the giveaway. I really, really appreciate it. And we can see just how many people were in this. So let's see who guessed 37 first. We're going to see someone right here, I believe, guessed 37, but this was the second person that guessed it. You can see here, Jalen Powell, 37. I believe this came about, about like two hours after the first person guessed 37. And we can see it was right here, Steve Solik, 37. If you're watching this, Steve, please, please, please drop a comment on this video. Shoot me a message on Instagram or Discord. However you want to contact me, you know, my email, we can get that money to you. I'll get that money to you as soon as possible once you contact me. And I believe Roberto actually... He guessed 38 literally once I uploaded the video. So, Roberto, you were that close, man. You almost got it, but uh, one, one point shy there. So, Steve Solik, again, shoot me that DM, and I'll get you that $25 as soon as possible. And let's get started with today's video. So like many of you guys should know by now, the Dow Jones had a 1,000 point day, $1,086.25 to be 100% exact, and this is the biggest increase that the Dow Jones has ever seen on a single day. So 1,000 points today, absolutely ridiculous, the markets were on fire 5% gain for pretty much every single index. We see the S&P 500 here. It was up about 116 points, 5% on the close. And we can see here the NASDAQ futures, guys. They performed absolutely ridiculously well today. We see today, guys, at, at about 9 a.m., you know, the NASDAQ was at about $5,880. And we shot all the way up to about $6,200 and about $75. Literally, guys, today the NASDAQ had a 6% day. So ridiculous movement, guys. We talked about, uh, you know, potentially having a bounce back day today due to the bloody week we had this past week, you know, Christmas Eve was very bad. The whole month of December has just been very bad in general. And, you know, a bounce back day today wasn't too out of the question, right? We were talking about this pre-market hours. You know, I was thinking this yesterday, you know, in my analysis, and I talked about it in one of the previous videos that today we could have had a bounce back day. But did I think it was going to be this big of a bounce back day? Absolutely not. I figured that we were going to have maybe a 200, 300 point day in the Dow Jones, you know, maybe a 20, 30 point day in the S&P, maybe like a 75, 100 point day in the NASDAQ. And clearly guys, that got blown out of the water. And let's take a look deeper into these technicals on the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So we can see, you know, where could we potentially move next? So the Dow Jones here, guys, again, the chart is showing lower highs, lower lows. Again, the previous, uh, this previous couple of weeks in December have been ridiculously bloody. We can see these charts, uh, these candlesticks are showing rapid sell-off, meaning that, you know, 
know, when we see the charts falling this quickly, this could indicate some panic selling. We've been talking about this, guys. You know, in the markets, we've seen, you know, the Dow Jones go up 300 points, right? And then we've seen it swing all the way down to about minus 600. And literally, these are uh, situations where we see a lot of panic selling coming in. And by panic selling, I mean literally within an hour, hour and a half, the Dow Jones can be up 300 points and fall down 500, 600, 700 points in a matter of an hour and a half, two hours. It's literally happened in the past couple of trading weeks. And this just, uh, you know, this just shows how scared and how, you know, uh, uncertain the market is right now. And literally, guys, today we saw the exact opposite. Instead of falling 700 points, today the market reacted very nicely to, I personally think, what President Trump said. And we're going to look at an article here on Yahoo Finance in a couple of minutes. And President Trump even tweeted today to buy the dip. And this is something that is very uh, influential on the stock market. It has a huge influence. And by influence, I mean President Trump has a huge influence on the stock market, especially with his Twitter, right? This is something that we didn't experience with Barack Obama as president. But now that Trump is very active on Twitter, you know, when he tweets something positive, when he tweets something negative, this tends to have an impact on the market. And I think today, guys, what he tweeted by the dip and, you know, whatever he tweeted fully in that tweet, um, this really caused the market to shoot up as much as it did today. Maybe it wasn't the sole reason, but I personally think it was a pretty, you know, big reason. And again, we've been selling off like crazy and this bounce back was due. It was in store. And, you know, my long-term portfolio guys today, if you guys could see it, it, it was ridiculous, right? I was up so much on my positions because Facebook and Apple had ridiculous days. If you can see down here, guys, my head's probably in the way, but Apple had a $10 day and Facebook had a $10 day. So that absolutely crazy, guys. So I can't complain, but uh, you know, let's just take a look deeper into what these technicals are telling us. So remember those supports that we were talking about on this three-year, one-week chart? Well, the Dow Jones successfully bounced at that $21,600 to $700 support. We can see that here, guys, by this candlestick. It literally bounced there, shot up 1,000 points to where we at. We are at right now at $22,800. So, you know, don't let this fool you guys. Don't let this one green day in a row fool you and make you think that we have a ton more, a ton of more green days in store. Because if we take a look at this 180 day chart, we've seen some situations like this happen over the past couple of weeks. And I want you guys to, you know, approach this with caution. I'm personally doing that as well. And to not let, to not let the chart and this huge push up, this huge gap up, you know, fake you out. Out because this has happened before. Take a look here. You know, it hasn't happened to this scale, obviously, but we've seen major pushes up over the past couple of weeks, you know, followed by bigger sell-offs. You know, we, we saw a big push up here. We followed, followed by a big sell-off, right? Big push up here, followed by an even bigger sell-off. So, you know, if we do have another green day tomorrow, you know, that would be good. But again, I still wouldn't want to get faked out, meaning that if we do have a green day tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, started to sell off to make another lower low. Because again, I still think there's downside in the market. I'm not letting this green day fake me out, meaning that me, I'm going to be buying into swing trades right now, going for a couple of weeks in, in some of these stocks. I'm not going to be doing that quite yet because I want to see you know, some more, uh, you know, market push up. And I want to see a further break out of this downwards channel that we're in before even considering taking swing positions, right? I haven't been taking many swing trades over these past couple of months, pretty much since the beginning of October, because this market that we're in is not really suited for swing trading, right? It's more of a day trading environment right now, in my personal opinion. And that's what I've been doing and sticking to until we see a break out of this resistance 
Ravens potentially, you know, right here. I'm not taking any swing trades on any stocks as of right now. Obviously, I'm buying in my long-term positions. That's nothing new, right? I talk about that on this channel all the time. But in terms of swing trades, guys, I'm not really doing that right now. I'm not really taking part in that. And uh, let me know what you guys are doing. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are doing. So very similar to the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 bounced on the support at around $2,320. A little bit above that, actually, guys, right around $2,350. But it's around that same general area of this support from back in April of 2017. So we talked about how the Dow and the S&P, they broke below the supports from this past February and March of 2018. And now we're testing supports from about a year and a half ago. So the fact that we broke above there, or uh, held above there rather, and we're holding this channel or this trend line rather on this 20 year uh, one month chart, that's a very good sign for the S&P 500 because like I mentioned in previous videos, this trend line right here is a very, very critical point over the past 10 years since the 20, uh, 2008 recession and the support that we are at right now, again, that we see on the three-year chart, very important as well. So the fact that we're holding above the 180 SMA right now on this uh, three-year chart, very good sign that we are pushing up in the S&P 500. But again, don't let this fake you out, guys. We could end up selling off even more. We just have to see what happens and always keep an eye on the pre-market futures, pre-market, you know, large cap stock movement. That is very, very important in dictating where the overall market is going. So I could see another green day or two out of the S&P, but again, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if we did end up selling off in the next couple of days, because I think there's more red to come in the markets. I've been talking about this because, you know, it's just because the market's shot up today doesn't mean that we've solved any problems doesn't mean that the trade war is you know resolved doesn't really mean anything right you know if if if, it, if the market did shoot up from what trump said you know this this news can be very quickly uh forgotten right this could be a very short-term thing trump shot the stock market up one day we've seen this happen before right this could just be very short term to where it goes away in the next couple of days and then we start to sell off again you know I would not really be surprised if that is what happened. And again, we got to keep an eye on the large caps pre-market and the futures for these, uh, you know, major indexes. And again, you know, just keeping an eye on the movement and really just to decide what we're going to be trading for the day. So the NASDAQ right now, guys, this one's actually at a very critical resistance on this 184 hour chart right under this 50 day uh, simple moving average. So in terms of the supports from a couple years ago, on the NASDAQ, we held above the $6,000 support right here from back in October of 2017. So very good sign, you know, very similar to the Dow and the S&P. We broke that support from back in uh, March and February of 2018, and now we're hanging above the $6,000 one. We obviously, you know, bounced above it. We're at $6,200 right now in the Dow Jones. And again, that's a very good sign because that is a technical support, very important support for the NASDAQ. But again, just keep an eye on this uh, you know, resistance here on the 180 chart because that has been a strong resistance over the past couple of months, especially since we've started to sell off in early October. So if we do end up breaking out of here, guys, especially the 50 and the 180 SMA, that could be a reversal pattern for the NASDAQ. Do I think that's going to happen? happen guys you know not really because i think there's more red to come but you know if that does end up happening we start to see some more positive news out of the trade war maybe some more positive news on the global economy growth of companies hey you know this could be the reversing spot of the overall markets but again very slim chance in my personal opinion because nothing's really been resolved you know there's still a bunch of tension and just overall uncertainty in the market so just keep an eye on the potential sell-off in the next couple of days, maybe even tomorrow or the next day, depending again on what the futures are looking like tomorrow and the large cap stocks. So, so just to look at this article very quickly, you know, we can see uh, the Dow had the biggest
single session point gains on a record on Wednesday. You know, we talked about the S&P increases. Shares of tech, uh, tech giants were some of the biggest gainers. You know, we saw Amazon did very well today. Microsoft did well. Apple had a $10 day. Facebook had a $10 day. Netflix did very well. Google did very well. Pretty much all the FANG stocks today did absolutely incredible, right? They did absolutely incredible excuse me, incredible. So stocks are currently trading in a seven-day period that often brings a so-called Santa Claus rally. So an annual window during which equities tend to rise. The event takes place during the last five trading days of the year through the first two trading days of the new year. Investors are continuing to digest commentary from President Donald Trump, who told reporters at the White House on Tuesday that he thought U.S. companies were having record kinds of numbers, and that is now a tremendous opportunity to buy stocks amid the months long uh, long downturn. So this is another thing that could have pushed up, you know, the markets today. At current levels, the price to earning ratio of the S&P 500 is just above 13 times earnings per share for the upcoming week, giving U.S. equities the most attractive valuations in about five years. And I believe the uh, the P.E., I don't know about the forward P.E., but the P.E. of the S&P 500 was about 21 before this whole, you know, uh, you know, the whole crash, quote unquote, crash, 15, 20% drop that we've seen. Trump also said that he has confidence that the Federal Reserve will get it pretty soon when it comes to interest rates. This is a very good sign as well. So these are a couple of things that, you know, Trump said that could have put some more belief, could have put some more hope, quote unquote, in investors' minds, shooting up the markets as much as they shot up today. So now let's quickly talk about what I traded today. And my trading day today, guys, believe it or not, was not very good. I traded DWT in the morning, took a 1.5% loss on that trade. I also traded TVIX, took a small profit, but left some shares on the board, ended up breaking even on the rest of those shares. And these were all, uh, these trades were all made within an hour and an hour uh, to an hour and a half, two hours into the market. And obviously guys, we didn't see an upswing until right around when I got done trading at about 11 o'clock AM, about an hour and a half, two hours into the market. That's when we saw the ridiculous upswing in the Dow Jones. And, you know, pretty much guys, if I were to hold or if I were to held, uh, you know, DWT from where I traded it, I would have lost 25%. So this is a prime example of setting stop losses. So I got in around $19 guys, set a one per 1.5% stop loss on DWT, obviously ended up hitting that, right? And we lost another 20% in DWT today. So if you're a beginner trader, guys, this is a prime example of why you should be setting stop losses religiously, right? Religiously, because this would have wiped out a quarter of your position. If you're using your whole entire account in one trade, you know, that would have wiped out your, your, a quarter of your whole entire account. And I don't recommend, you know, using an, your entire account on one trade. Scaling into positions is always the way to go, especially if you're a beginner. But, you know, if you did this, guys, if you did not set a stop loss, you would have lost 25%. But if, if you did set a stop loss, you would lose 1.5%, 2%, 3%, depending on your risk tolerance. So I lost 1.5% there on the TVIX trade. I got in at around this, this little dip right here at about $79, I believe, and 40 cents was my initial position, added a little bit more money here, sold off at this resistance here as I noticed it was making a double top formation, took some profits there, kept some shares on the board on TVIX, that was a complete mistake, and then I ended up just breaking even on those shares, and obviously, you know, we tanked pretty hard in TVIX as well, we lost about 12 to 15% on this ETF today. And overall, guys, you know, on this trade, I made about, what did I say? Like I was in at about 79.75 average, ended up selling off here at about 2% profit. So on the day, guys, I made about 2% 
on TVIX on my first batches of shares. Ended up breaking even on the rest that I kept on the table. So that's a 0%, 2%, and then I lost 1.5%. So on the day, guys, 0.5% profit on the day on the capital that I used. And, you know, this is something that uh, maybe a lot of you guys would be like, wow, this guy made 0.5% on a day when the markets were up this big. But, you know, I'm not really stressing it, guys, because, again, I'm trading from about 9.30 to 12. So I kind of missed that big upswing from about 12 to 4. I could have hopped onto my computer, but I was doing some other projects on the side. So I was not really able to, you know, trade that big upswing. But my long-term portfolio, I'm sure a lot of you guys' long-term portfolio is looking absolutely fantastic today. Mine did very very, very well. So the gains that I made in my long-term portfolio, although they're not technically profits, but the amount of money that I made and percentage that I made on that just trumps what I made today on trading. So that's why I'm not really like mad that I didn't do too well today. But you know, it's a learning experience as always, guys. You know, I could have made a lot more money if I were at my computer, if I did catch this big spike in the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. But I'm not sweating it. I'm not stressing it because there's always another day. There's always tomorrow. And, you know, I'm just going to focus on the future instead of dwelling on past trades. I'm going to put those in the history books, move on and plan tomorrow and trade what I'm going to trade tomorrow. So that is what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading TVIX and DWT. So in terms of what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, guys, very simple. I'm going to be watching large cap stocks, pre-market hours, and the futures to see what direction we could potentially be moving for the day. Are the pre-market futures going to be showing another green day? Or are we going to be having a pullback day tomorrow, right? In my personal opinion, guys, if the market futures are showing that they're green and, and, and like up 1% pre-market, we could have a bounce back day tomorrow again. But if the market futures are showing that we're down 1-2%, you know, we could have a you know, we could have a red day tomorrow following this massive green day that we had. And it's all about playing it by ear, seeing what is going on pre-market, and uh, that'll really help you in terms of trading and what stocks to trade. So if we do have a red market tomorrow, guys, expect drip, uh, DWT, you know, uh, what else, you know, drip and uh, DWT, especially to have very solid bounce back days, because I don't know if you've realized this, but crude oil, uh, not that it correlates exactly with the markets, but you know, when crude oil is going down, typically the markets are as well. And, you know, over the past couple of weeks, we've seen DWT do very well pretty much from the beginning of, uh, you know, October. We can see this from the start of the sell-off in the markets. DWT has been shooting up a ton. So now we're holding above the 50 SMA on this chart. And, you know, this could be a bounce spot for DWT, especially if crude oil sells off tomorrow, if we have an overall red day, as well as the market ETFs, TVIX, TQQQ, SQQQ. And, you know, if we do continue to have a bounce back day tomorrow in terms of a green day, I'm going to be playing TQQQ. If we have a bounce back day tomorrow in terms of uh, a red day going down in price in the overall markets, I'm going to be playing TVIX. And and just like DWT, guys, I'm looking to potentially play Drip. Drip was down 31% today, guys, from the peak of $27.50. Literally, it dropped 31%. So watch out for a bounce back play on Drip, ticker symbol DRIP, potentially tomorrow. Because again, just like DWT, this one tends to go up when the markets are selling off. They don't directly correlate, right? But we can see from the beginning of the market sell-off in early October, this one has gone up from $5 all the way almost to nearly $30. So what an increase in Drip, guys. This could be a very good play tomorrow if the markets sell off. 
and if XOP in general, which is the ETF that drip correlates with directly, sells off as well. So if that, you know, if we do see a sell off tomorrow, guys, I'm going to be playing TVIX and SQQQ and obviously drip DWT. And if we see a bounce back day again tomorrow, I'm going to be focusing mostly on TQQQ, you know, Gush, UWT, and all of these tech stocks and large cap stocks that we talk about on this channel. So I don't want to drag this video on too long. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord group as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I hope you guys have a great day, great night. Peace out.